What's going on in the uh, oceans? Oceans are getting warm, especially the North Atlantic. Hello, friends. Jim here. Accelerating ocean heat breaks all-time records. North Atlantic Ocean temperature is on a red-hot streak. New research finds ocean temperatures, quote, have now smashed previous heat records for at least seven years in a row. Seven years in a row. And who said that? Li Jing Cheng and his colleagues. New record ocean temperatures and related climate indicators in 2023. As you know, I have featured his research previously on my channel, and I have the full uh, article. I'm in the middle of studying it. I will be doing a video on it. So stay tuned. Certainly, it's nothing to mess around with an ocean with as oceans absorb over 90% of planetary heat. Ocean heat represented on a chart displays a near vertical solid move up for over the past year. This is so, you know, Michael Mann's famous hockey stick applied to ocean temperature. Well, oceans have been absorbing human uh, produced energy from burning fossil fuels going back at, for, were measurably noticeable for at least 50 years. Climate science does not have a record of such a powerful jolt upwards for ocean warming. So, obviously, what they're talking about is that the rate of change has increased and increased significantly. A recent New York Times headline tells a story scientists are freaking out about ocean temperatures by suggesting it could be indicative of developments beyond all expectations by mainstream science. January 2024 was the eighth year in a row when global temperatures blew past previous records. The North Atlantic has hit record-breaking temperatures and holding them there for a solid year now, according to scientists. And it really should, you know, be a, a, a wake-up call you know, to the political leaders to basically get their arses in gear and do something. But they're not. It's not only the North Atlantic that is acting up in, in heating. Down south, according to Matthew England, professor of the University of New South Wales, the sea ice around Antarctica is just not growing. Temperatures are just going off the charts. Global warming appears to be infectiously dis indiscriminate north-south throughout the globe. And these are dire times that need the attention of nation states and leaders. Especially those that are vulnerable to changes in the ocean, you know, like the Maldives. So what's the impact of the ocean heat acceleration? And I'm going to tell you things here. You've heard me talk to you, discuss with you for how many years now? The impact of ocean heat acceleration. According to NASA, global climate uh, change, vital signs of the planet. Accelerating ocean warming, one, increases sea level rise due to thermal expansion. Two, accelerates melting of major ice sheets, already starting to cascade everywhere on the planet, directly increases sea levels. So you get meltwater, thermal expansion, sea levels are going up. And it's a nonlinear increase, by the way. It's, it's at least polynomic. Three, intensifies hurricanes, all that heat energy. Four, degrades overall ocean health with loss of biodiversity. That's the biggie. Because, you know, the stratification increases, productivity falls off. And the CO2 is messing up 
you know, the pH and the lysocline. And we're seeing uh, increased mortality. Toss in overfishing. Well, yeah, you get the picture. For example, the blob event in the Pacific Ocean laid the foundation for what to expect from ocean heat. According to NOAA, an unprecedented marine heat wave known as the blob dominated the northeastern Pacific from 2013 to 2016, upended ecosystems across a huge swath of the Pacific Ocean. This led to an ecological cascade causing fishery collapses and fishery disaster determinations. And that was published in the Ongoing Marine Heat Waves in U.S. Waters Explained, NOAA, published in July of 2023. If fishery collapses, as experienced a decade ago, on top of depleted fish stocks like we have now, that's a formula for disaster for marine life and human life. Globally overexploited fish stocks, catching fish faster than they can reproduce, or what the year class strains can replenish has more than doubled since 1980. Ergo, therefore, most current levels of wild fish catch are unsustainable. And the source for that is fish and overfishing our world in data. In 2015, a record outbreak of toxic algae shut down West Coast Dungeness crab fisheries worth millions of dollars, right? It was affected us here in Alaska, in the Gulf of Alaska. The, there was, you know, huge, huge uh, mortality among the crabs. I've done videos on that. Right? So then came the, after the Dungeness crab die-offs, came the seabird die-offs. Record number of whales entangled in fishing line. Uh, salmon returns dropping off drastically. Starving California sea lion pups washing up on beaches. And that's just some of it. According to Arctic News, the year 2024 looks to be worse than 2023. Sea surface temperatures that are extremely high in 2023 will be followed by a steep rise in 2024. In fact, crossing 21C or 70F as early as January 2024. Toxic algae welcomes the heat. It is sustained and enhanced by warmer waters. And right, just think of like red tide, you know, flagellate blooms, red tide, and that causes toxic shellfish poisoning. You can't eat the shellfish. Fish die as, you know, that eat those organisms. You get fish kill and so on and so forth. You get basically increase mortality across various species for various trophic levels. According to Copernicus, which is the Earth Observation Program of the European Union, the average global sea surface temperature for January over 60 degrees south to 60 degrees north reached 20.97 degrees C, a record for January. 0 0.26 degrees C warmer than the previous warmest January in 2016 and second highest value for any month in the ERA-5 data set. Now, you have to wonder how much of that is due to the El Nino event. Putting that aside, though, the oceans are warming, and they're warming drastically. Since 31 January, the daily SST for 60S to 60 North has reached new absolute records, surpassing the previous highest values from 23rd and 24th of August, 2023. The planet is turning hotter prior to, during, and in the aftermath of COP28, UN Climate Conference of the Parties, held in oil-rich Dubai. COPs have been held for nearly 30 consecutive years to address the issue of climate change and global warming and what to do about it, Yet they have miserably failed to impact fossil fuel emissions up every year and accelerating. In other words, they've done diddly squat. COP28 was a tilted game in favor of continuation of fossil fuel emissions. And according to Martin Seeger, Polar Scientist, Deputy Vice Chancellor at University of Exeter, science is perfectly clear. 
COP28, by not making a clear declaration to stop fossil fuel burning, is a tragedy for the planet and our future. The world is heating faster and more powerfully than the COP response to deal with it. A tragedy for the planet and our future, as emphasized by Dr. Seeger, is a travesty that should not be allowed to stand throughout the history of COP meetings. Never has the oil and gas industry taken the lead position in meetings of 60 to 80,000 attendees supposedly devoted to fixing global warming. Nothing more needs to be said about the charade known as COP28. Yes, it was a charade. It was a farce. It was a bloody waste. The people of the world have never been so easily bamboozled, hoodwinked by an international body that's supposed to protect the sanctity of the planet. COP28 did not. Where's the pushback? Regardless, the oceans are in a state of rebellion. The ocean, all that heat in excess of 90%, it's being returned to the atmosphere. It is being, it doesn't move vertically downward in the water column as readily because it's, the oceans are stratifying. So whatever gets advected horizontally goes to the polar regions to melt the sea ice, prevent the sea ice from forming. And it's returning to the atmosphere. It returns to the atmosphere by diffusion or by fueling powerful hurricanes and other cyclon cyclonic storms. And, you know, here's an interesting thing. Worldwide petroleum refineries are constructed along coastal areas and rivers to take advantage of water resources and easy transportation. This is coastal regions is where we get onshore Ekman pumping and upwellings. The middle of the ocean is a biological desert. Ocean productivity, the great majority of it, occurs on the shelf. This is why when the refineries have an oopsie, a spill, a disaster, the marine life is devastated. So, like everything else, you can't argue with physics. All that heat was sooner or later bound to be returned to the atmosphere. And it's happening right now. This is why I contend that we'll see an, an acceleration in the temperature rise where, you know, depending on the modeling and, and the projected outcomes and, you know, what the exponential rates used and so forth are, you know, a warming of 5 to 11 C by 2100 is not inconceivable, is not unlikely. In other words, it's quite likely. And when that does, well, humanity will probably be exiting stage left. More dire news. But you know what, folks? We've been doing this to ourselves. The pity is that with all the other species we're taking with us. Thank you for your time.